Good morning to all. I am Dr. Subbaya. Today I am going to discuss about battery ingestion triage and treatment guidelines. So suspect the diagnosis. Consider the possibility of a battery ingestion in every patient who presents with acute airway obstruction, wheezing or noisy breathing, drooling, vomiting, chest pain or discomfort, abdominal pain, difficulty in swallowing, decreased appetite or refusal to eat, coughing, choking or gagging with eating or drinking. And suspect a battery ingestion in every presumed coin or other foreign body ingestion and carefully observe for the button batteries double rim or halo effect on AP radiograph and step off on the lateral view. So if battery ingestion is suspected, first do not induce vomiting and administer honey immediately if a lithium coin cell may have been ingested. If you don't know what kind of button battery was swallowed, assume it is a lithium coin cell unless it is a hearing aid battery. And administer honey if the child is 12 months of age or older because honey is not safe in children younger than 1 year. And administer honey if the battery was swallowed within the prior 12 hours because the risk of esophageal perforation increases after 12 hours. And administer honey if the child is able to swallow and the honey is immediately available. So this is the lithium cell battery. So every battery has a standardized name. As an example, in this battery CR2032, the letter C denotes the battery chemistry which is lithium. The letter R tells us the battery shape which is round. And the 3 or 4 digit reference numbers on the batteries indicate their approximate or exact size. So in this battery 2032 indicates the battery diameter is 20 millimeter and the thickness is 3.2 millimeter. And what's the difference between coin cells and button cells? So they derive their names from their shape and size. The thinner variants are called coin cells because they resemble coins while the thicker ones are called button cells because they look like buttons. So their size ranges from 5 to 25 millimeters in diameter and 1 to 6 millimeters in height. So how to, what is the dose of the honey? So give 10 ml of honey by mouth every 10 minutes for up to 6 doses. Do not worry about the exact dose or timing and use commercial honey if available rather than specialized honey. And honey is not a substitute for immediate removal of your battery lodged in the esophagus. Honey slows the development of battery injury but it won't stop it from occurring. So do not delay going to an emergency room to obtain or give honey. So what is the mechanism behind giving honey? So honey is administered to coat the battery and it prevent local generation of hydroxide thereby it delays alkaline burns to adjacent tissues. Other than giving honey, keep the patient nil per oral until an esophageal battery position is ruled out by X-ray. So immediately obtain an X-ray to locate the battery. The batteries lodged in the esophagus may cause serious burns in as little as 2 hours. So do not wait for the symptoms to develop. So patients with a battery in the esophagus may be asymptomatic initially. So the 20 mm diameter lithium coin cell is most frequently involved in esophageal injuries and the smaller cells large less frequently but it may also cause serious injury or death especially in children younger than 1 year of age. So when x-ray is not needed, if the patient is more than 12 years and the ingested battery is less than 12 mm, no x-ray to locate the battery is required if all of the following conditions are met. So the patient is entirely asymptomatic and has been asymptomatic since the battery was ingested, x-ray is not needed. And only one battery was ingested and a magnet was not also ingested, doesn't need x-ray. And the battery has been reliably identified based on imprint code or measurement of an identical cell and the diameter is less than 12 mm. And there is no history of prior esophageal surgery, esophageal stricture, mutilated disorders or other esophageal diseases. So when the patient or caregiver is reliable, mentally competent and understands the importance of promptly seeking evaluation for symptoms possibly related to the ingested battery, X-ray is not needed. 
So on physical examination, check both air canals and the nasal cavity to exclude battery insertion. Obtain both AP and lateral X-rays for batteries in the esophagus to determine orientation of the positive and negative poles. So carefully observe, zoom in on X-ray imaging for the button batteries, double rim or halo effect on AP radiograph. And on the lateral view, look for the step-off sign. So on the lateral film, the step-off is on the negative side of the battery. So the negative pole has a slightly smaller diameter and the damage will be more severe in tissue adjacent to the negative pole. Immediately remove batteries larger than the esophagus. Serious burns can occur in 2 hours. And if possible and if the child is able to swallow, administer sucralfate suspension. Give 10 ml per oral every 10 minutes up to 3 doses until sedation is given for endoscopy. So honey may be substituted for sucralfate suspension in children 12 months of age or older. So do not give sucralfate or honey if the battery was possible in the esophagus for more than 12 hours. Efficacy is based on a 2018 study. Here both honey and sucralfate effectively prevented the expected battery induced pH increase and decreased the depth of the resulting esophageal injury. And sucralfate and honey administration it is not a substitute for emergent battery removal as these agents slow but do not eliminate tissue damage. And do not delay battery removal because a patient has eaten recently or because a patient was given honey or sucralfate by mouth. And endoscopic removal is preferred as it allows direct visualization of tissue injury. After removal, inspect the mucosa surrounding the battery to determine the extent, the, the depth and location of tissue damage. So note the orientation of the battery in the esophagus. Is the negative pole facing anteriorly or posteriorly? If possible, avoid pushing an esophageal battery into the stomach as the risk of esophageal perforation may increase. And after removing a battery from the esophagus, if mucosal injury was present, observe for delayed complications. So what are the delayed complications? Tracheoesophageal fistula, tracheal stenosis, esophageal perforation, mediastinitis, vocal cord paralysis, aspiration pneumonia, empyema, lung abscess, pneumothorax, and exsanguination from perforation into a large vessel. So when to retrieve batteries endoscopically from the stomach or beyond? So when a magnet was also ingested, the patient develops signs or symptoms that are likely related to the battery ingestion. A large button battery, which is the size is more than or equal to 15 mm diameter, ingested by a child younger than 6 years, remains in the stomach for 4 days or longer. It's an indication to remove the battery from the stomach. If a button battery more than 20 mm size in the stomach or beyond in a child younger than 5 years, might have lodged in the esophagus for more than 2 hours before passing into the stomach. So consider diagnostic endoscopy to exclude the remote possibility of esophageal injury. And allow batteries to pass spontaneously if they have passed beyond the esophagus, stomach and beyond and when there are no clinical features of significant gastrointestinal injury is evident. Manage the patient at home on a regular diet, encourage activity. And avoid unnecessary endoscopic or surgical removal in asymptomatic patients. Promptly re-evaluate all patients who develop signs or symptoms possibly related to the battery. And endoscopic removal of batteries still in the stomach should be pursued for even minor symptoms. And for batteries beyond the reach of the endoscope, surgical battery removal may be required in the unusual patients with evidence of occult or visible bleeding abdominal pain, vomiting, signs of acute abdomen and or fever unless these clinical manifestations are clearly unrelated to the battery. So confirm battery passage by inspecting stools. Consider repeat radiographs to confirm passage if not observed in 10 to 14 days. Confirming passage may avoid urgent diagnostic intervention for minor symptoms developing later. And avoid these ineffective, unnecessary or unproven therapeutic interventions like epicoc administration, blind battery removal with a balloon catheter or a magnet affixed to an esophagus tube, 
blood or urine concentrations of mercury or other battery ingredients chelation laxatives or polyethylene glycol electrolyte solution thank you